Hi there, my name is Ananya and I'm a student in CS109 this quarter and I'm so excited to give you a crash course on the Cauchy distribution. The Cauchy distribution I think is one of the most interesting and wonderful probability distributions and one thing that's fascinating about it is it doesn't follow the central limit theorem, which is such a core concept that we learned in class. And it's not an exception to the central limit theorem because it's like this weird niche parametric equation situation that we would never see in nature, but rather the Cauchy distribution is used in modeling light and modeling photons and physics and in so many applications in our everyday world. It's such an elegant situation. So I'm excited to share it with you at Cauchy 101, everything you need to know. To begin, I want to talk about the generative story behind how we get the Cauchy distribution. Let's say we have a spinner, similar to one you might see in a game of Twister. And this spinner we place anywhere on the XY plane, but for sake of example, in creating what's called the standard Cauchy, we will put the pivot point at a uh, location of 0, 1, meaning 0 on the X axis and 1 on the Y axis. Now we will spin the dial and we can land at any location on the spinner with equal likelihood. So we have a uniform distribution for how we pick the angle that we stop at. So we spin our dial and let's say it ends up pointing over here or pointing over here. We take the angle that it's pointing at and we will extend a line out and where that line intersects with the x-axis is our value. And then when we spin it a lot of times, we see all the values of our x-axis intercepts of extending out the lines of where it stops and when we take a look at all of those results, we have the Cauchy distribution. Wow! Now, you might be wondering a few things. First, if we spin our dial with equal likelihood of theta, how come we don't have an equal likelihood of points on the x-axis? Why is it not uniform? Well, if you think about it, the angle at which you extend in relation to theta um, hits the x-axis based on the tangent of the angle. And so, because that is not linear, we will see not a linear distribution of how we end up having our x-axis intercepts. Additionally, you might wonder, oh, like you would think maybe it's normal, maybe, but something really interesting is a Cauchy distribution is different from a normal distribution. It's more fat-tailed, it's more flat. To provide some intuition to why it's more fat-tailed, you can think about how in a Gaussian, as you go to infinity, it converges to zero, but with a uh, Cauchy, when you're spinning your dial, it's actually substantially much more likely that you end up picking an angle that goes really, really, really far away um, and gives you a point that's much, much, much closer to infinity. And so because of this, the normal distribution does not account for the increased likelihood of hitting something that has an angle that intersects the x-axis at a really, really large value. And something else that's really fascinating is this example of um, picking a spinner, we can place it anywhere. It doesn't necessarily need to be on the y-axis. Um, and then picking an angle. This combination has seen many applications in physics and created a lot of revolutionary theories as well as financial modeling for um, the markets and other more interesting derivatives trading directly model the Cauchy distribution. And there's a lot of applications of this in nature. Now that we understand a little bit about the generative story, I'm going to write out the PDF of the Cauchy distribution and explain the parameters that exist at the beginning. So this is the PDF of the Cauchy distribution. You can see there are two parameters that this function takes in. First, x0, which here represents where we're putting our, our spinner, our pivot point to the center point of our spinner, what is the x and y coordinates of where we're placing it, which can be represented by x0 and gamma here. And for the standard Cauchy distribution, people like to set this to x being 0 and gamma or y being 1. The CDF is the following. As you can see, the CDF takes in the same parameters of the x and y coordinates of where we're putting our spinner and it returns all the probabilities before that value um, integrating the PDF thus far. Something that's really fascinating about the probability distribution of the Cauchy is that it doesn't have a mean. Now you might wonder, what do you mean it doesn't have a mean? I can look at it and I can see right there in the center there's like a huge lump and everything looks so symmetric all around that it must have a mean. And while the median of the probability distribution is located directly under where the point was of the spinner, the mean cannot be calculated and does not exist. The reason is because if we take a look at our equation to calculate the mean of a probability distribution, 
This formula requires that we integrate from negative infinity to infinity. However, something interesting about the Cauchy distribution is that it does not converge. A normal distribution, when you're extending out all of its tails to infinity, it eventually converges to zero, which is why we're able to take this integral. However, the Cauchy distribution does not converge to zero. It is fat-tailed, so it, it diverges as it tails off. This makes the calculation of the integral to not exist, which as a result ensures that the mean and the variance of the Cauchy distribution also do not exist. Now, let's say we want to do an estimation of parameters of the Cauchy distribution. If we take iid random variables of sample size n, we learn this equation in class to find the sample mean. However, something fascinating about the Cauchy distribution is that as you take more and more samples, the sample will become increasingly variable because more observations might be taken and you might have one observation that's so close to infinity or an extremely large number that it throws off the mean that was calculated. As a result, it creates this funny extrapolation where the distribution of the sample mean will be equal to the observations themselves. Meaning, because we have some funny business around the infinities, a sample of more samples is no better than just sampling one sample. A sample mean of a large sample is no better at calculating the initial parameters as just taking one sample. Now moving on, this leads us to maximum likelihood. And maximum likelihood estimation is a strategy that we can use that we've discussed in class. The likelihood function for the Cauchy distribution looks like this, where we multiply the PDF, uh, the values that we get. Then we can take the log likelihood, and this is the log likelihood function for the Cauchy distribution. You can see here that we're taking in all of our sample points, and we are trying to find out, given a certain x and y, so the location of our initial spinner, what is the likelihood. We can take the log of both sides. Once again, our uh, multiplication turns into a giant summation, and we can set the derivative of this log likelihood to zero, which enables us to find the maximum. Now, this brings us to perhaps understanding why the Cauchy distribution does not follow the central limit theorem. If we add iid Cauchy random variables, we don't get a normal distribution because similarly, if you think about it intuitively, the tails where there's a high likelihood of getting a number that's close to infinity, we can see that it actually converges not to a normal like the central limit theorem would suggest, but rather another Cauchy distribution. There's a condition in the central limit theorem that we have finite variance. However, this implicit assumption is not satisfied by the Cauchy probability distribution because we do not have a variance. Finally, I want to talk about stable distributions. The Cauchy distribution, it's stable. There are very few functions that are stable. One of them is the normal distribution, the Cauchy distribution, and the Levy distribution. Those are the special three stable probability to function cases. The stability of a random variable is defined by if you take a linear combination of your random variables, meaning you add two Cauchy distributions together or you scale one and then add it. The resulting value will also be a Cauchy distribution. There are only a few examples of famous of stable probability distributions and the three special cases are the Cauchy distribution, the normal distribution like we talked about in class, and the Levy distribution. In conclusion, hopefully the Cauchy distribution has made more aware that sometimes we can have functions that don't converge at infinity and it causes a lot of weird properties like they don't have a calculable mean because you can't integrate over them properly, they don't have a variance, yet still having a median and coming from a normal place. We also talked about the concept of stability where if you take a linear combination of your random variables you receive the same random variable on the output like the normal distribution. We talked about how the Cauchy distribution doesn't follow the central limit theorem as well as the PDF, the CDF, how it was derived, and MLE, how we calculate that for estimating our parameters to maximize our log likelihood function. I hope you learned something new and something interesting and have a wonderful rest of your day.